and welcome to the St. Catholic service and thank you for joining us on this, the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Today, some of the churches in Wales will be opening for the first time in four months. Our ministry area worship leaders met on Thursday to pray and to discuss how we plan to move forward safely, as our church experience will feel strange when we all have to distance from each other and many people will still not be able to attend. So, for the time being, we will continue to provide this online worship for you and we pray that God will bless us in our time together this morning. Pauline and John from St Mary's in Bramour are our readers today. Father Patrick will be leading our intercessions and Reverend Rana Khan will be reflecting on the parable of the weeds later on in our service. Now in recent weeks we've been hearing from people around the ministry area who are reaching out to the community in various ways. Today we hear from Nikki and Jeremy about a wonderful outreach which I have had the pleasure of being involved in, the prayer spaces in schools. I've been asked to say a few words about prayer spaces in schools. The idea came to me from the 24-7 prayer network. One of the ideas that came out of this was the idea of creating a space for prayer, creating, if you like, a creative and uh, a place where you can feel things and see things and touch things as part of prayer. And out of this came the idea of the prayer space being put into a school. This would just be a temporary thing where we'd put a creative installation inside a school in which we'd invite the children to participate in prayer. Now, many children have nothing whatsoever to do with church or with anything to do with God or anything. So this is an opportunity for them to find out a little bit more about the spiritual life. Some of them want nothing to do with God. And some of them have got parents that want nothing to do with God. And therefore these things are carefully made so that they work for those who have no interest at all in God. But, in them, we can teach children to pray. And it's good for them simply to work through their thoughts, their feelings, their hopes, their fears, and all these things. We've done some now in St. Mary's Church School in, in Brimau and in Tlangatuk Church School in Tlangatuk and in Gilwan in the State Primary School there. In each school, they've worked brilliantly, whether in a secular or a church school environment. They've been very warmly received by the children and by the staff, and we've been invited to return to all of them. Nikki, my wife, has actually led all these things and she's got a few profound thoughts now because she's the one that's experienced them most of all out of everyone. Thank you. God bless you all. Jesus did prayer spaces. Come away to desert a place all by yourself and rest a while, it says in Mark. Jesus knew he needed space. Prayer spaces in schools is different to what you normally do in school. It's unusual team come together to transform libraries, halls and classrooms, whatever space has been offered, into a treat for all the senses. This transformation involves plenty of drapery, fairy lights, colourful boards and of course the individual prayer stations. The physical space matters. The look and the feel of the space that engages with all our senses is significant. We need rest for all our senses. And I think arguably one of the great weaknesses in our culture is the lack of time to reflect. Children and young people need time to reflect and time away from all the clutter. God meets us when we stop. There are also spaces for wrestling. Jesus in the wilderness wrestled and in the Garden of Gethsemane. He wrestled with himself and his calling. This is a space where we can wrestle with hard issues like, who am I? Where am I going in life? Maybe God has a calling on my life. It's in the wrestling that we help children discover who God wants them to be. We find the space for renewal. In the renewing, we discover our identity and find fresh ways of being and doing. Prayer spaces are about renewal and young people discover that renewal. It's extraordinary to think the mighty creator of everything is meeting people in this tiny little space. In doing so, they discover the children and anyone who does who they really are, and they can live out the glorious freedom God longs for them. Thank you, everyone.
week, I realised that my initial enthusiasm for tidying the garden at the beginning of lockdown has diminished a bit. There are some fruits of our labours, but the weeds are sneaking back and I need to catch up with the deadheading so that the flowers keep blooming. It's a parable for our spiritual lives, isn't it? We need to attend day by day to those things which separate us from the love of God. We need to say sorry to God and ask for his help in healing our relationship before the weeds become too deeply rooted. We spend a few moments now drawing to mind the things we have said and done and thought which have not pleased God. And so with confidence we confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and peace. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us praise the Lord together for his goodness and mercy. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks, thanks to God, God through Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let, Let us sing, sing to God, God with, with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and, and we, we shall, shall praise, praise your name. name. So with hearts full of praise and thanksgiving to God, let's sing together. Thank you. 
We're going to turn to our Bible readings now. Nikki will lead us in our psalm reading before we turn to our readers in Brimaur. And then Rana will preach to us. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love towards me, and have, you have delivered me from the depths of the grave. The arrogant are attacking me, O oh God. A band of ruthless men seeks my life. Men without regard for you. But you, O oh Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God. Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear. Or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock, I know not one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. The Parable of the Weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed ears, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go out and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. 
for last couple of weeks our sunday readings are allowing us to talk about fields seeds and source mogal last sunday was talking about the parable of the seeds and parable of the sower and this sunday i am reflecting on parable of the wheat which we have just heard from the gospel of matthew this friday i was in brimaur to meet with few people we were discussing about the weeds in the church yard and how to clear it up and make it tidy we were talking about the weeds more specifically we were talking about japanese not weed you might have read an article by reverend max billes who is chaplain at queens college cambridge in his article he wrote being a priest i would like to suggest is being like a jobbing gardener then we moved to krikhawl Three years ago, our back garden was not in good condition, and the bottom bit really needed some attention. Mosina likes gardening, and we decided to sort it out. We needed little help. Phil Keen from the Evangelical Church, and Danny Gold, they both joined us. We needed a digger, a few more equipments and tools, a lot of hard work, patience. and care and then finally we were able to bring it to some reasonable shape our old testament reading helps us to focus on god who always is there to help us and the most powerful that each and every person and the nation and the country need our second reading from the gospel of matthew contains a lot of parables it is famous for its parable i will just give you an overview of chapter 13 the parable of the sower in first nine verses and then purpose of the parable in verses 10 to 17 the explanation of the parable of the sower from verses 18 to 23 and this morning we are talking about the parables parable of the weeds from verses 424 to 30 then the parable of the mustard seed from verses 31 to 32 and a very famous just one verse parable parable of the yeast in luke chapter 13 verse 33 and then the use of parables jesus is talking about 34 and 35 verses and then explanation of the parable of the weeds from verses 36 to 43 and then there are few more parables about the kingdom of god and then in uh, uh, then we read in verses from verses 48 to 50 jesus is talking about judgment treasures new and old from verses 51 to 53 and then in the end jesus was rejected in nazareth in his hometown from verses 54 to 58 why jesus talked in parables he was an amazing preacher told simple stories to understand the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of god very easy way he adopted to tell the truth to the world but sometimes it becomes difficult if you are not connected with god if you don't understand the person who is preaching well the greek word in matthew 13 verse 11 which the new revised standard version has translated as secret is mysteria This means literally something hidden. In Jesus' time, in the time of the New Testament, mysteria has a different meaning than now. Now we think or we perceive mystery, mysterious or secret as no one knows. It is hidden, difficult to understand. But in Jesus' time, it had a different meaning and different connotation. The one who... who is connected or insiders they were able to understand and those who were not insiders it was difficult for them to understand still in many cultures there are various ways to communicate things and only those can understand who know that culture and know that context well jesus in this parable which is known as the parable of weeds but also we can call it the parables of two sowers a sower who sowed a good seed the wheat and the other sower 
who came in the night in the dark and saw the bad seed. I grew up in Pakistan and especially in Punjab where I worked in first five years of my ministry in a rural parish. Uh, quite a big number of people in my parish, they were from the farming community. I know farming well. There were a lot of incidents when people who had revenge against someone, they will use these sort of things to make them harm, to, keep, to harm them. So Jesus is talking about what happened with the field. I was also privileged to visit Holy Land a few years ago and more specifically Nazareth. I went to the countryside to understand the chapter, Matthew's chapter 13 well. There are still a lot of weeds, rather more weeds than in Jesus' time they were. The tars and the weeds, weeds which is specifically mentioned in chapter 13, they look like wheat difficult to recognize and from the bottom in the roots they are twinkled with each other and it's it was quite challenging even for farmers to recognize which is the weed and which is the seed now the slaves came and they are asking the master who did that and what we should do with that hebrew word for this specific this specific weed is zunim and linguistics says Zunim has a connection with the word Zana, which literally means to commit fornication. From where this weed has come? This was the question slaves asked from the manager or whosoever the person in charge. From where this weed has come? Did you sow the bad seed? Did you sow the weed? No one is going to sow the weed. A question the servant asked, we all have asked this question various times in our lives. We all have these questions. Why it happened with me? Maybe we use different words or we have used different words. Perhaps you have faced death of a loved one, a devastating illness or difficult situation in your life. And then we say, why it happened with me? If God is loving, kind and gentle, why it happened with me? Sometime our circumstances take to a certain situation where we see why it happened with why I'm like this. This was the question they asked from where this weed has come from. There is a long list in our lives that we can put together about asking this question in different words and different ways. Why this has happened with me, with my family, with my country, with this world, with us. We often live with this assumption. We have put a lot of energy, all the plans are good, everything is going smooth, definitely the results will be positive. Sometimes results are contrary to our ambitions or our expectations. This is what Jesus is telling through this parable to his disciples. Not always think if you are doing good, everything is going smooth, there will be no upset. There may be some kind of upsets. From where these weeds have come from. This parable teaches us various things. I would like to draw your attention towards these lessons which we can learn from this parable. This parable teaches us that there is always a hostile power in the world. Seeking and waiting to destroy the good seed. This parable teaches us there is always a need to make distinction between those who are in the kingdom and those who aren't. This parable teaches us don't to be so quick to make judgments. As Mother Teresa says, if you will judge people, you will not have time to love them. This parable teaches us there is, in the end, a day of judgment. And there is only God there who has the right to judge others. This parable teaches us to be patient and calm. This parable teaches us to be connected with God and listen to him who will guide us at the right time what to do and when 
to separate the wheat and the weeds. In our ministry area, we are fortunate. We have many people who pray for one another. If you know someone who needs support and help, if you know someone who needs a help, just be there. But the most important thing for us all is to be connected with God. Be patient whenever challenging times come. It is the gardener's job to nurture the garden and look for signs of new growth. In our reading from Isaiah, we heard, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. And so we affirm our faith in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe and trust in God the Father, who created all that is. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And so we turn now to our time of prayer. Let us pray. In the Gospel, Jesus tells us, If you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. Let us confidently take Jesus at his word as we turn to the Father in worship and prayer. Glory to you, Almighty Father, to your only begotten Son, Jesus, our Saviour, to the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. Father, we turn to you in our need as the scourge of COVID-19 pandemic sweeps the world. Deliver us from its ravages and quickly bring it to an end. Father Almighty, hear our prayer. Father, we commend to your mercy all who have died during this time. Grant them the eternal light and joy of heaven. Father, all merciful, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we bring before you the grief and suffering of all those who have lost their loved ones. In your kindness, comfort them in their pain. Be near to them in their desolation. Father of love, hear our prayer. Father of wisdom, we pray for our government, assemblies and local councils. Guide and inspire them is as they try to do what is best for the people. Holy Spirit of wisdom, hear our prayer. We pray for our Archbishop John, for the clergy and lay workers of our ministry area as they strive to continue the proclamation of the gospel during these difficult times. In the name of Jesus, we ask for the grace and strength to keep faithful in our witness to Christ. May your Holy Spirit be with us. May his power be manifest in the world. Father of glory, may your kingdom come. We pray for those across the world who are hungry and unable to feed their children, as is the case in parts of Africa at the moment. Father, inspire the nations of the world and the people of the world to come to their aid. Heavenly Father, who feeds the birds of the air, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the housebound of our parish, for those who are in hospital, and for all the sick and infirm in our ministry area. We pray for Vira Lewis, Brian Jones, 
Sharon Williams, Peter Morris. Father, restore them to health of mind and body. Grant them peace and tranquility of soul. Father of peace, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's draw our prayers together now in the words which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're nearly at the end of our service. Our thanks again to all who have contributed in front of the camera and behind the camera. If you've been touched by anything during this service and you'd like the opportunity to talk or pray, please get in touch with us through the usual online messaging methods. Locally, St Ed's, Llanbedr, Llangattuck and Llanganeda churches are open for private prayer this week. Please check the individual church notice boards for opening times. Rana leads a short service of evening prayer at 7pm each evening on his Facebook page. The Talask Forum is a weekly broadcast of items of local interest released online on Wednesdays, again at the usual links. Next week's service comes from the Vale of Griney. Barry Roach will be the preacher, Annabelle will lead our worship, and we will hear from Fagner Gestalden about his children and family's work there. The service will premiere at 10.45 next Sunday. Now, if you're watching the Talask Forum this last week, Wednesday, you would have heard this final song, which reminds us of the importance of placing our trust in God. Holy Trinity.
trust in his righteousness alone faultless stand before the throne God, which passes all understandings, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.